Okay. Should we go over them real quick? Just really quick. Go over these patch notes. Just, just really quickly. Just, just really quickly. Just read. Just slightly read through these minor upgrade updates. This small, small patch notes here. Holy shit. That is a lot of information. Well, first let's watch the video. Here we go. Oh, hang on. My audio is still blocked. Shut up. My audio is still blocked. F I'm just trying to go to the beginning. And I'm not saying that you should autoplay. Yes, like that. Jesus. It's turning into a Maple Story stream with all these audio difficulties, dude. Okay, here we go. Hot, nice, like it. Okay, um, what do we already know? What can we kind of blow through? We could probably go through the whole thing tomorrow, but to go through the important stuff real quick, um, all of the skills and all of the numbers, not very exciting. We know all of this already. Um, the one that, ones that we don't know for sure are the non-KMS ones, so we don't know if they're going to change the numbers versus the numbers that we already know or the ones that we saw in the test server. So I think it's more important here to focus on those, which I wonder if they are going to be mentioned separately or there seems to be no rhyme or reason to how this gets mentioned. It's not alphabetically in the skill. It's not alphabetically in the class. It's not by race. It's not by subclass it's just randomly thrown in there okay so finding anything is going to be tricky um nightwalker phantoms you know back in here first here the lines are still going to be bad here number of attacks four damage six times okay arc no jets um blah 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 so was, uh, at level 25 it's 900 percent of max hp oh so that scales with your level that's why it was th so 30 for me so that's probably going to go up to thousand immune to knockback for 45 42 seconds i think that went up to 45 as well final damage went up to 15 percent at level 30 so this seems to be the same so far if you press the skill key again you will launch an all-out barrage attacking with 15 enemies 100 percent 10 volleys number three volleys in total all-out barrage cooldown five seconds and the whole cooldown is three minutes that seems like to be the same skill. Beast Tamer. Um, duration forms enemy effect up to five enemies. Thousand percent damage ten times. It was a little bit higher than that, so that seems like the same thing as well. The more changes. Activate the tag attack that attacks enemies with the five second cooldown. Okay, that seems to be the same thing as well. Hayato, big damage, only costing mana. Ten attacks cooldown 11 seconds that went down to 10 seconds at level 30 so that's probably also a skill that reduces its cooldown as you level up so that's pretty important and then ghost yaksha does it say here how long invincible during cost and disarmament yeah okay so it doesn't really say how long that is i think it's only like half a second honestly because from the videos that we saw and from what i've experienced it didn't seem that amazing of a of an iframe um, duration 60 seconds, open a portal down. If a fourth or below ghost structure is dismissed, the sacrifice will be accumulated according to the amount of time the ghost was summoned. Accumulated sacrifice reaches 60 seconds, the great lord can be summoned. 
Creator repeatedly attacks up to 15 enemies. I wish there was an indicator for this to know how close you are. But up to 15 enemies, when using skill, portal will immediately close and a great level of performance final attack, which attacks a lot for a lot of damage a lot of times. So that's also the same. Okay, so jet skill revamp is what we felt. Uh, the main thing is Galactic Might removed skills casting action, that one. And then for Bounty Chase, they did the same thing. Turret, deploy turret deployment was going to switch a lot, right? Mana costs and cooldown have been reduced and damage has been increased. Max enemies hit has been reduced from 2 to 1. Fix the issue where the player did not receive normal damage. Uh, skill duration will be displayed as a buff icon on the top right corner of the screen. Added an attack reflection ignore feature. Fix the issue where the hit effect would not be displayed. By the I really wonder if this is enough to... But yeah, again, like, damage has been increased. No numbers here, so, you know, if that's enough to make a big difference, not sure. Just not sure at all. Uh, let me put these under um, exclamation mark patch, actually. For now. Save. There we go. Uh, back up down damage increased. Max enemies hit has been increased from 5 to 8. And attack count has been increased from 3 to 4. Attack speed has been increased while the skill is in use. Yeah, because this skill used to be really good. And then they completely destroyed it. So now they're kind of trying to bring it back, I guess. Card booster. Oh, Singularity Shock. That's the one. Skill delay has been reduced. Improve the part where the post-hit attack of Singularity Shock would not be applied to enemies that are too close by. Too close. There's such a thing as too close. Wait, how can you be too close? Isn't the hit like from your body to so there was a there was a gap between where your character is and where your hitbox is? That's never a good idea. That always that always ends up being bad. Um fifth job, meme meme meme. Job balances. I think this is all the stuff that we already knew. Slash blast, war leap, leap attack, rush, upper charge. Um, the dash change, guided arrow change. Yeah, so this is the two balance changes that are all coming together. It's a lot of stuff. Um, and for most classes, this is a lot of line re um, readjustment, so if you're going to be playing, what you're going to see is you're going to see way more lines of damage on basically every single character. Uh, your numbers will probably look a bit lower, uh, but you'll have more lines. So if you're playing with the, um, what is it called again? Um, wait, where the, where's my character? Oh, here in the corner. If you're playing with the, what's it called? The blade effects, you will just see smaller numbers, but if you're playing with normal, then you'll see way more numbers, so. Smaller still. Um, yeah, I can, I'm not gonna go over all of this. We went over all of this when it we went to KMS, and it seems that they would just copy everything because that would make the code easier, just copy pasta that shit. Um, I think the more important stuff that people wanna know is probably the 5, 10, 15s, and the, well, the 5, 10, 15, the sunny Sundays, I mean. Uh, and, and to confirm if Burning World is only for, um, oh yeah, Luminous is getting all of those uh, <laughs> action delay reduces again by a lot. So basically all their skills are faster again, or at least ac after the skill, you'll be able to move around faster. And I'm out of water, rip, bad timing. Demon Slayer, action delay reduced. Demon Avengers, Star Force increase. Star Force 121 to 140 increased from 100,000 to 102,500 HP. Wait, Star Force conversion? Oh, for Ursus. <sighs> Nobody cares, bro. <laughs> More HP in Ursus? Please do something that matters. <laughs> These are not important, all right? This is not. Demon Strike, you will now 
immediately stop if the Monic Blast is activated while you are charging forward. Wow, animation canceling. Pack Monic Blast fixes you with Damien's altar could not be used while charging. Oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Imagine charging blasts unironically. Dimensional sword detected for all the spinning attacks have been reduced by 14% compared to before, and the duration will now be applied more precisely. Yay! Also, apparently, this makes very, very, very little difference. Um, la 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 la. Lots of stuff. Pinpoint salvo. Skill range has been increased by 58%. Get those rockets out of there. So, mechanic is getting their dash and their boosters and shit where they can fly around. That's uh, that's quite new. Da, da, da. Oh yeah, the dragon barrage for Kaiser is now a teleport instead of a dash. So now they have two teleports, essentially. Which is interesting. Um, ba, 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 ba. The line readjustment on zero is immense. So this, <laughs> this block of text for zero is crazy. Because every single attack they have is also like two attacks, right? Because it's two and one. Um, Adele nerfs... Ether obtained periodically has been increased from 5 to 15, and the interval between obtaining has been increased from 5 to 10. And then, where's the other one? Ether Forge. Tech range has been reduced. It's, it's just a lot of changes for Adele, also. So definitely read up on all of that stuff if you're interested. It's just so much. Uh, Arc is kind of uh, the. Key hold down time needed to activate float has been increased to prevent accidental. Oh, but that also means that it's harder to activate your flight on your highest point of your jump because you're going to have to hold it for longer until it activates. Vengeful hate, best the number of abyssal marks that exist on the map, and the duration has been increased from 12 to 20 seconds. Oh, nice. Fix issue where the auto mode abyssal mark restrictions were applied and the abyssal marks of the other arcs were visible. In cutscenes where only you are present. Interesting. Damage of the guard. Final damage and increase the portion to give. This is getting fixed later where um the damage is is readjusted and also um divided over three lines instead. Fix your issue was was possible to change equipment while the skill is active. That's unfortunate. Ho Young switches with the energy um with the energy bar, that's going to be hopefully a good quality of life uh, improvement for them. Um, Hayato, post skill delay reduced, post skill delay del reduced. You can move while casting military might and god of blades. Hmm. Added a feature to command lock the skill for vapor blade. Oh, so that instead of your skill uh, moving your screen, that your character just moves on your screen. That's interesting. Cooldown will be displayed as a buff icon on the top right corner of the screen. Good. Um, added a link. Add a link to rising slash after the skill. Okay. Danku Sing change to skip action frames. Add a link to rising slash. Okay, so more, some more stuff for Hayato to play around with. Interesting. No more up jump portals. Yeah, you can still try. Um, Beast Hammer Fishy Slap change so that you can move while the skill key still is still pressed. Oh shit, you can move around with Fishy Slap now? Damn. What is Abyss Guard? I don't know. What is that in connection to? Because I don't see that here. Uh, formation check changes so that you can move while that the key, key is pressed. Nice. Tornado flight changes so that when controlling the tornado, the tornado can be moved diagonally as well. Changes so that you can move during Meow Cure, cure and Card. Wow, okay. Wow. On Arc? Abyssal Guard. Oh. Oh, the Abyss Guard. That's just the... That's just the shadow... Uh, like the shadowy dude that appears that like does that damage. That's just the name of the, of the, the 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 ghost you see basically. I think about the shade skill. Um, it seems like you really can only use it while the target is bound. Otherwise, if you even just 
if the boss like moves a little bit too far away or he teleports or whatever becomes untargetable for a little bit then all of the balls at the end that do a big chunk of the damage will just not have a target and you will lose a lot of dps uh for that so you have to make sure um that you use it at the right timing is everything on that one but if your timing is good it seems like a solid skill so uh, better maple changes so the day potions redeemable at any day of the week and they will just last until the end of sunday uh, the icons and quantities of the food material you obtained will be more easily visible in hungry mudo oh yeah they they increase the size of the um, um of the number over your head number of rock spirits the same thing the current maple points in meso will be displayed in the meso market ui oh thank you uh, experience accumulation potion, wealth existing potion, invincibility potion, cleansing potion, and resistance potion. Oh yeah, they will look a little bit different, so you can see which one's which. Um, the name was different. Different for each place. You can check the character's hair and face information. Okay. Um, if you equip pets and you have auto HP and MP potion pouch skill and set the potion to be automatically replenished, the set will now be deactivated instead of being unequipped from your unequipped pet. Okay. Uh, healing restriction will be raised to 1 million for potions that heal in proportion to Michael's character's HP. Thank the Lord. So we will finally be able to full heal with a power elixir as a demon avenger. Woo! Yes. Only took us years. Good job. Um, coin shop, NPC, and location information will be added to tooltip description. Sure. We have to enter Legion while you have yet to claim the coins from the Legion raid with another character. It'll do, you know, some auction house. No one cares. The Legion placement mode will be improved. Clicking on character cards will activate blocks on the synergy grid. Edit blocks menu that when clicked, these selects the block that places it on the grid. A button to remove. I, man, why don't they just do a visual for this? Why is it like full text? Why are there only visuals for items? In the KMS patch notes, the, or at least Orange Mushroom does this, I think that the KMS actual patch notes, do they also do that? The, there's way more visuals for all of this. Makes it way easier to just understand what they're talking about, what's going on, and then, you, yeah. Sometimes taking a picture is just, you know, picture says a thousand words sometimes. Decoration tab, yeah. Well, we saw that in the test server. All cash items, all cash equipment items and inventory equip tab will be moved to the decoration tab. Hmm. <gasps> all of the, all of the black heart earrings, guys. <laughs> all the black heart NX earrings will finally all be moved over. Thank God. All right, let's see. What else do we have? Um, spacing between inventory spaces. You saw that in the test server. looked a little bit weird, but we'll probably get used to that pretty quickly. Hovering over Android items will display the Android's appearance. The response time improves a better gameplay in Hungry Mudo and Spirit Saver content. Okay. Uh, process of adding the guild blacklist. Okay. Uh, transfer hammer UI will now display a separate icon for currently equipped items. Okay. Um, a grand Athenaeum. Storyline with a outfit, or no? Is it not the outfit? Is it just the uh, the medal that we're supposed to be looking at? Oh yeah, the medal and the chair, and three hundred spell. <gasps> money, 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 money. But mainly, mainly this. Oh, I remember these guild PQ statues. <laughs> Old guild PQ. Good shit. Superior Engraved Gallic's Pendant Exchange. Uh, UTC December 3rd after maintenance. Wait, all characters that had two Superior Engraved Gallic's Pendant items must, must items equipped at the start. Wait, why am I reading must? All characters that had two Superior Engraved Gallic's Pendant items equipped at the start of number of November 18 maintenance. Oh. We'll have an exchange on December 3rd. So we'll have to wait another maintenance two weeks later to actually get the switch. Wait, so is the set bonus changing on the 19th, but then we don't get the switch until the 3rd?
Uh-uh. I hope they only implement it on December 16th. No, wait, you can do it until January 26th? Whack. Whack. Okay, well, we'll have to see exactly. Yeah, you must have two of them equipped. Even those that have yet to obtain the Gallic's Force that piece of effect. You may, only you may only request for the equipped superior engraved Gallic's pendant to be exchanged. Pendants that were not equipped during eight November 18 maintenance cannot be used for the exchange. If your second pendant slot was expired, but you still had two of your superior engraved Gallic's pendant items equipped, you're still eligible for the exchange. Uh, I would not risk this, though. Just buy... It's worth the 15 million mezzos in reboot. <laughs> to just buy that to make sure. Um, for those who are eligible, the exchange quest can be will be available after December 3rd maintenance. So the process will be accept the quest from the notifier. The quest allows you to request one of your, the quest allows you to request one of the two uh, pendants that you have equipped at the time of the maintenance to be exchanged for a belt. The pendant you would like to exchange must be in your inventory when making the request. Oh, so you have to unequip it, okay? If the pendant has an accessory exclusive potential, you'll receive a pop-up with the UI with details, of course, because you can get mesoptain and drop rate on belts. Uh, exchange quest can only be done once per eligible character. Okay, well, that's... Oh, no, wait, that's normal. I thought for, in my brain it said like once per eligible character per day or something. It's like, well, of course, because you're going to only do it one time, right? Uh, once you've requested the exchange, the pendant will be removed from your inventory, rip, and then Gollock's superior belt distribution quest will appear after you make the request. And then you can collect the belt on any character of your choice in the same world. Oh, damn. So this is true. Oh, wow. Okay. So if you've got like a spare 22 star superior pendant, you can just get a new character that you're trying to fund. You can just get him a 22 star superior belt. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So that means that there is some value if you have backup pendants right now. You could Star Force pendants now on a character that you have access excess of, equip them, and then just exchange and give it to another character that you don't have any drops on yet. Though the belts do drop and the pendants might be more valuable on the character you're on, but you know, this might be a way of salvaging some of the value that you have from keeping old Gallux drops. Um and uh, you know, giving that some access to uh to funding newer characters that don't have access to those drops yet. You forgot non-reboot only? <laughs> you think that they would put that somewhere? So you can get a belt on your zero? Um, oh yeah, shit, yeah, you might be able to get a 22 star belt on your zero immediately, yeah, because this exchange is until the 26th of January. Uh, so pendant belt specifications, star force enhancement, bonus stats, hammer status of the chosen pendant will be transferred to the superior engraved belt. Potentials and bonus potentials will be transferred, excluding the accessory exclusive potentials. If the pendant's potentials are not transferable to the belt, oh, excuse me, only the rank will be transferred to the belt and the player should reveal its potential using a magnifying glass once again. Uh, since the number of scroll enhancements that can be applied to a pendant and a belt are different, the adjustment stats will be transferred to the belt proportionately according to the number of enhancements succeeded and applied to the pendant. Belt will be untradeable once equipped for non-reboot worlds and untradeable for reboot worlds. I mean, it doesn't matter if they're tradable or not tradable for reboot world. There is no trade. So <laughs> even if they were tradable, we still wouldn't be able to trade it. Because it's a game mechanic, not an item mechanic. Okay, any questions about this, guys? About the superior engraved Gallux pendant exchange. So, what does this mean? While you guys ask questions. This does mean that if you have extra pendants lying around on a strong character, you could decide to star force them now, before the reset, get them to a high star force, 
equip them together with at least one other pendant that you want to keep and exchange one of those pendants once uh, December 3rd rolls around um, and you don't have to keep them equipped the whole time, right? So as long as you have two of them equipped, then those two items will be eligible for exchange starting December 3rd, but you can only exchange them from your inventory, right? You may only request for equipped for the equipped superior engraved galaxy. Okay, so you have to have two superior pendants equipped at the start of the maintenance so you can participate in the exchange. Then you may only request for the equipped superior engraved the Godlike's pendant to be exchanged on the third, right? So th those don't have to be the same superior pendants that you have to have equipped on the 18th. At least that's not how I read it, right? So as long as you have two superior pendants equipped when the maintenance goes live, then on December, then you will be eligible on December 3rd to exchange one pendant, one superior pendant on that character to trade into a belt that you can redeem on any other character in that account. Hmm. Yeah, so if you have spare superior pendants on a character that you weren't going to be switching on anyway, you could try to get it to high star force. And then once your zero um, is high enough, uh, well, then on your zero, you can just redeem it there as a belt and immediately have a belt there. It works on reinforced? No, no, only superior engraved pendants, yeah. Going to equip solid pendants? <laughs> Do you have to create a new character to earn Terra Burning? Yes, Terra Burning is something that you activate in the character selection screen when you make a new character. All right, so, so any more questions about the item exchange, guys? Then I'll, if there are no more questions, then I'll, then I'll move on from here, okay? I'm hearing that they're moving the piggy bank from the Maple Tour Shop. Oh, is that in the chat? Because then we'll, we'll probably get to that. Only equipped pendants are eligible for exchange. Yeah, but the, you can only request the change on December 3rd. You're going to be switching out your inventory since then, no? You're going to be switching out equips and moving around sets. It says you have to have two of them equipped. And then it says you can you can try to exchange th for the equipped superior engraved god expendant. It doesn't say like the previously equipped or those equipped. It says the equipped, right? So whichever ones you have on at that time. Oh no, because you have to request it when they're in your inventory. Yeah, so it has to be the ones that you have had, that you had equipped on the 18th, probably. Yeah, okay, that, that would be more consistent, yeah. This allows you to request one of those. Oh, here. This request allows you to request one of the two superior and good expanded items that you had equipped at the time of those kind of to exchange for its beer. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, this this specifies it. Yeah, okay. Do 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 do. I think this makes sense. The dependents that you had. Yes, yes. It, it probably looks at the item code and tags those two as being eligible for exchange. Yeah. Okay, um, then MVP system renewal, we get MVP red. You can reach MVP red if the amount of NX spent in the last three months, including the current month, is 1.5 million NX or more. Can we get one of those, um, what is that credit card emote again? Um, 
Oh, Pepega credit. Yeah. Can we get a Pepega credit going on in the chat right now? Oh, here we go. The boys are already... 1.5 million NX in three months, boys. You better swipe that credit card faster. You're not getting to 1.5 mil at this speed. Come on, guys. 1.5. You know how much money that is? $1,500. People always say, oh, coffee is like $5. That's 100 coffees a month. That's three coffees a day for three months straight. A little bit more actually every now and then you get some extra foam on it 1500 usd 1500 usd after um after any kind of sales things i think you have to spend more than 50 dollars to get 50k nx now right because there's like added sales tax things can't sub to pokey now that's a lot of subs dude it's this is 300 twitch subs in three months you can subscribe to a hundred streamers for three months straight for this money. <sighs> it's a lot. A hundred streamers. Or you can donate to one streamer, basically like half of their income. <laughs> for me, this would be like half of my streaming income for a month. Damn, that's a that's a high tier. What do you get from this? You get um, fifteen k maple points and bonus twenty k maple points. You get thirty five dollars back. Pfft, wow, I mean, that's almost a net wash. Um, ring ring damage skin, tidal metal, eternal noblesse, hyper teleport rock, royal infinite recovery potion, glory of red, red rover. And a gift pack with 15 MVP superpower buffs, 15 half hour double experience coupons, 15 hyper megaphones. Hyper megaphones? Is it better than a super megaphone? What's a hyper megaphone? Does it look like. Does it, is it, does it have ADHD? Unity training coupons. Very useful. Monster Park entry tickets. MVP plus atmospheric effect and 30 MVP 50% bonus experience. 30. Whoa. You do get a lot, but that's, that's still a lot of money. Uh, you receive the same Star Force enhancement, auction house, fairy bros, daily gift content perks as an MVP diamond rank. Uh, oh. Oh, that's all the same as MVP diamond. Okay even though you're spending $200 more per month, almost double. You're not getting, okay. Gift pack. Okay, lots of stuff, lots of stuff, lots of stuff I don't MVP. Monthly gift packages. Wow, look at all of that stuff. Skill improvements. Um, okay, we can't go through all of this, it's just too much. Uh, scroll energy increased by using Sage Tai Yu's Miracle Tonic has been increased from 300 to 350. All right, that's the selective one I read, okay? Another selective read. Fix the issue where the upper charge skill icon had been changed for Hero and Paladin. There you go. This one. Added a skill description to Bishop's Holy Fountain saying that it is not affected by effects which reset cooldowns or increase recovery skill potency for accuracy. All right. Amazing. Oh my God, there's so much here. As the issue where if Phantom sets a Sacred Sanctity to back up memory H, uses Divine Echo to bind with a Paladin party member, and then changes the skill registered to impeccable memory H after the Paladin Sacred Sanctity is shared, the shared Sacred Sanctity would be cancelled. <sighs> Imagine a Paladin and a Phantom in the same party. That is a guaranteed clear right there. So you can get a Golux belt on a different character. Yes. As long as you exchange a pendant on a character that had that very pendant equipped when the game went down tomorrow. <laughs> That's the future past. Um, Adele can now use Feather Float in Ardent Mill. Oh, thank God. They're at least they're listening to the people. 
Fix the issue where the client would close when Cannoneer jumps beyond the map's specified height in the Will Phase 1 boss battle using Cannon Jump. It does seem like something you don't want to have happen. Alright, what else? What else? Overall improvements were made to the skill logic to fix the issue where an entered skill would fail to activate due to effects such as potion use, auto buff, or, or auto. Feed for pets and the activation of skills that do not affect character actions. <laughs> Wait, somebody... Somebody ax somebody oopsied here. This should be one and a half. Wait, does this oh my god, does this also mean they don't mention familiars here, but they oh I wish they would do this for familiars too. Maybe that's gonna be part of the familiar overhaul stuff in the second one. What is that spacing? Yeah, that should have been a bullet that should have been a, a space and not a return, but yeah. Fix the issue. Of course, I would randomly pick that one out. Little, little old facetious me. Um, what else? Oh, what else? Bishop will now be able to use Erda Nova while righteously indignant is active. Pog. All bishops rejoice. Fix the issue where Cannoneer's monkey was sometimes invisible. We can't have that. Fix the issue where Battle Mage's blue aura dispel magic was applied only once when casted and its hit damage reduction effect was only applied to yourself. Pfft. I can't believe this was in the game for that long. Okay. Fix the issue where the effects for the hero's combo attack would still be visible when hit with certain attack patterns in Ursus even when the effects were turned off. I thought it was going to say, like, fix the issue where when you die as a hero and you respawn without a buff raiser, that it doesn't show your your uh, combo orbs as if you have them when you don't have them. So you so you wait and use your iframe and then your iframe doesn't go off because you think you had enough stacks, but you actually didn't have enough stacks because they were just there visually but not actually functionally. But I, I don't know if they're fixing that because I'm not reading all of this. Oh my god, this is so much. Explorer's Warrior's Blitz Shield will now be detonated only when the skill is used again. Oh shit, doesn't it automatically detonate? Okay, cool. Uh, fix the issue where if you took normal damage after Bishop used Holy Magic Shell, it seemed as if the block count was not reduced. Oh, finally. Okay, the last one. Fix the issue where some skill effects for Kinesis displayed awkwardly in certain resolutions. Awkward. Okay, cool. Quest improvements. No. Uh, you cannot use return scroll nearest town or move to art mill through the profession UI in entrance to Chaos Zakum altar. Were you able to do that before? Okay, apparently. Oh my god, okay. Item improvements. Um, We're just selectively reading some because there's so much stuff going on here. The system message that is displayed upon obtaining cash items will now display the individual quantity of items within a bundle. Thank a god. Oh, fix the issue where the images for Demon Avengers job medals looked awkward. Uh, fix the issue where sometimes the cooldown of Hyper Megaphone is calculated incorrectly. We can't have that. With these MVP Reds spending $1,500 every three months, we can't have their shit be awkward. Okay, you can no longer equip normal equipment after it has been moved from your inventory to the cash tab. Uh, okay. Not sure how you can move normal equipment to your cash tab in the first place, but okay. Change it so that the AMP entropy and EXP entropy buff effects can be disabled with right clicking on the mouse and can be protected with buff freezers. Why? Nobody goes to Kreechas. 90% of the people who I just read this to in the chat don't even know what these items are. <laughs> but I'm glad it's fixed. We can... A sigh of relief, chat. The extra experience and... Um, and uh, anti-magic uh, gathering potions in Kreechas are now fixed to be buff freezer savable and right-click cancelable. Thank God, chat. Oh... Um, content changes. Okay, Arcane River Efficiency Improvements. Uh, Light of Annihilation and Alliance will no longer be activated and summoned in Limina's End and the World of the World Region. 
Oh, good. No more AFK mobs there. Uh, the following maps will uh, be improved to have more monsters appear more frequently. Fanching Journey, Weatherland of Happiness and Rage, and Fire Spirit Zone. Isn't that literally like the Fire Spirit Zone? Wasn't that the one meme map where actually everyone was already training because it was so good on their Kana because they could just teleport from the top to the bottom with the meme? Um, world map is here. Fire... Oh, no, that's Extinction Zone, Fire Zone. Oh, Fire Spirit Zone. That must be this one with with Soulful as well. Oh, okay, I see. And the other one, what? Happy and Raging? Happiness and Rage. Okay. Reverse the City. Um, T-Boys Research Train 2. I thought Research Train was already like one of the better ones. Damn, okay. Research Train 2. This one. Okay, cool. Wow, all of those maps, almost. Choo Choo Island, Torn Zone 2, Skywheel Mountainside. Skywheel Mountainside 2. Also, way down here, Skywheel Mountainside 1. Interesting. Um, okay. Ooh, who's that? Amine, I'm a ghost. Amine, welcome back. I welcome, <laughs> I welcome you back, dude. How's it going? You uh, you peeking back in for the wake update? Just seeing what's going on. Like a line chicken festival one. Yeah, cause that map needed to be improved. They're improving chicken festival one. Okay. I'm mean, you make the rules, not me. Uh, occupied dance floor two. That's a pretty good map. Arcana. Deepest part of the cavern, lower path. Between Frost and Thunder 2. Oh, maybe they can go back to their former glory a little bit. Fallout Town. Pretty much all of the lower level maps. Yeah, pretty much all of the unpopular maps here, huh? That makes sense. CFS 1 is dead in KMS. I guess it's because they don't have Kanas. <laughs> the Kana kit just lends itself so well for CFS 1. It's, it's not even funny. It's not even funny. It's hilarious. Just so much more than funny. Um, uh, boom, boom. Hang on, I need to set up my raid channel legend shit. Hang on. I need to. Uh. Fuck. I leveled all of these guys already. Level this one then. Okay, here we go. Um, Bully Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Um, well, all of these maps could be buffed because no one's here. People are in Shadow Dance Hall 3, I think. That's the red... That's going to be the red shadow dudes, I think. That's the only one that I really see people at in Morass. So th that one's also getting buffed. Interesting. I don't know why this is how it's mentioned. Like, Bully Boulevard 2 here, and then 1 here, and 3 there. I don't know. It might be by how much they're getting buffed. Or how little. I don't know. Esfera, MTS 3 and 4, 6, 5, and yes... MTS 7 is getting one of the biggest, at least if it's the same that KMS got, one of the biggest buffs of all of the maps. MTS 7, which is considered already the best farming map in all of Asphera for Kanas, is getting... Didn't I delete it? No. <laughs> I just logged off of it for like the, one of the first times ever, and then I logged right back into it right after. But, uh, you know... We don't talk about that here, okay? It's Mip Story stream, Mip Story exclusive stream. All right, we don't. We don't talk about that other stuff here. Give me that five star outlaw monk. Hell yeah, he's gonna help me in. He's gonna help me so much in my uh, in my meme my memeage right now. Oh, I'm gonna meme so hard with this guy. No, I pressed the wrong button. Spend gems that I didn't mean to spend. Oh no, oh no, it's all falling apart now. It's all falling apart, chat. What are we doing? Uh, here we go. Okay, uh, Moonbridge, Void Current, Last Horizons, some mysterious fog ones. It's a big list, all right. Uh, End of the World, 1, 4, 1, 5, 2, 3, and 2, 5, apparently, also getting some help. I think those are the maps that have some fake monsters on it. Um, because they were kind of ruining the spawn for any kind of training being able to be done there. Um, so 
I, I think that that's what they reworked. The following maps in Kerning Tower, Hennessy's Ruins, Stone Colossus. Uh, uh, it'll be improved to have more monsters appear more frequently. Lots and lots of maps, chat. Lots of maps. Elite Champion Adjustment, finally. Black Crescendo Slime. Each time it is defeated, it'll grow over three stages with a faster growing speed. Nice. A faster speed, a higher speed. Speed can be fast. Speed is just a thing that exists. The thing that has speed is fast. What? That's like saying an expensive price. Okay. Um, Shadow Butterfly. 15 butterflies will be summoned at once to chase the player. Oh, yes. Dark Wolf. Five dark orbs will be created on the map. Upon defeating all the orbs, the dark world will appear... The dark world will appear from hiding. Oh, and then we kill... Wait, Dark World? Isn't that supposed to be Dark Wolf? Or am I... I don't know. Maybe he's called the Dark World. I don't know his name. Uh, killer Bees. Ten Killer Bees will be summoned at once to chase the Illusion Flower on the map. Wow, that's a, that's many changes. Timber Shade is gone. Can we get some crab emojis in the chat for the Timber Shade? That annoying thing with the shield that like saps the life force out of monsters and that just ruins your spawn? That guy? Out of here. Fuck that guy. We don't need him in our maps. Get lost, Timber Shade. And he would have been gone three months ago if he didn't <laughs> we'd split. If he didn't uh, combine those last two pages. Rip Timber Shade. Fs, Fs, and Dancing Crabs for that guy. Uh, dark Gargoyle. Upon defeating one Dark Gargoyle, it'll split into ten mini Dark Gargoyles, and they will chase the player. Nice. They really like things that chase you. Uh, when you defeat an elite champion, an elite champion orb will be created. Four elite champion orbs will be created at once for a short time. And once the player touches the orb... Ooh, touch it. Uh, they will receive EXP. Uh, EXP of the infinite orbs will be determined by your contribution uh, to defeating the champion, the elite champion. Okay. Elite champion orb will not be created for characters that are outside of its level range. Aw. EXP obtained from the elite orb will not be affected by additional EXP effects. Aw. Uh, notification will be displayed when a player fails to defeat the elite champion. Oof, insult to injury. Uh, illusion flower and killer bees will no longer be created in the same location. Fixed issue where the illusion flower received more damage if there were if there were another character present. If there were another character present. Was, no? Hmm. Um, on the map. Another character were present. No, it was. Yeah, okay. Uh, reboot gift box adjustments. Wait. Ooh, adjustments. Oh, this is big, actually, because I have a command for this. I gotta take a screenshot. Oh, I'm Chrome, when I scroll, when I zoom, why are you moving? Look where the look where the bar is here. I zoom in. Bam. Why do you do this? Oh, why do you do this? Reboot. Yes. Okay. Control Shift S. Take a screenshot. Nice. Whoa. Yeah. Uh. Keep no expand canvas. Pog. Control X. Control N. Okay. Control V. Beautiful. All right. Let's do that later. So. Stage one, 20 million mezzo, 100% epic potential scroll, 300 potions, and the t box two. Box two, 30 million, 100% epot, character slot expansion coupon, five master craftsman cubes, and box three. Box three, 50 mil, 100% epot, character slot expansion cube, five meister cubes, and a thingy. And box four. Uh, box four, 100 million, character slot expansion coupon, 100% unique potential scroll, another five meister cubes, and box five. And then box five has three reboot mezzo pouches. Those better be those ones with the huge amount of money in it, okay? Because, oh, the real question is, where's my box five, okay? <laughs> I don't have potential badges, and now I'm also not gonna get my box five. This is like, too young to uh, be born in space and uh, too born too early to 
Explore Space and Born Too Late to Be Born. In nah, I don't know. It's something like that. Um, it says Reboot Mezzo Pouch. I don't know if you guys remember, but there used to be events where there were Mezzo bags um, that were capable of giving insane amounts. So it would be... Um, oh, God. What were the amounts? I think it was 1 mil, 6 mil... 12 mil, 18 mil, 30 mil, I think, could be in them. These were huge. And since since they're giving 100 mil here, 50 mil here, 30 mil here, I'm guessing that these might be those big bags. No, 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 not the bronze, silver, and gold bags. No, no, they looked exactly like regular mezzo pouches, but they would give huge amounts. I think it was like 1 mil, 3 mil, 5 mil, 8 mil, 12 mil... And then 30 or 20 mil? Oh, 20 mil. 1, 3, 5, 12, 1, 3, 5, 12, 20, something like that. I don't know exactly, but like big amounts like that. It, it might be that there are going to be those. Why am I stream during maintenance? Uh, gear progression, probably um, Twitch things and probably some more, answering some more questions and probably maybe looking a little bit deeper into the patch notes because there's so much in there. New accounts get the box. Yes. Um, Malaysia removal. Malaysia will be removed from the world map. Malaysia maps will be blocked from entry. The following quests will be blocked. <gasps> oh, F's in the chat for Malaysia, boys. First was Singapore. Where are the crab emojis? Press F. We just deleted... Yeah, we just deleted an entire country. Gone. Literally delete removed from the world map. This sounds like it's a, <laughs> it's it's like I'm opening up a, um, like a fucking another encyclopedia. But what's the? Oh God, what do you call that? Like the book that has all the maps in it? Because <laughs> now you just Google that shit. I don't know. It's like an update, like patch, an atlas. Thank you, an atlas, dude. I'm boomer brain. I should know this. This is like a thing that I had in school. Uh, it's it's like you you're reading the patch notes on the atlas. Like Malaysia is not recognized as a country anymore. Has been removed from the world map. <laughs> it's like oh damn, what did they do, or what happened to them? Oof. Thanos snapped it away. Rip. Nuked. Yep. Yeah. Why all the Asian countries? Yeah, I don't know, man. They want to make an exclusive content to Maple Sea, maybe. I don't know. Is there anything worthwhile in Malaysia? I heard. Well, I heard the food is pretty good. <laughs> You got that. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, right now in Malaysia, is there anything worthwhile? Um, blah, 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 blah. Well, now that people don't go to Bye Bye Station anymore, I guess it's completely useless, huh? Although, aren't there like two? There, weren't there like two separate Bye Bye Stations? One was like connected to the theme park, and then the other one was actually in Malaysia or something. Bye bye is actually bye bye. Yeah, I guess so. Malaysia and Singapore were my favorite maps. There was some cool stuff there. I had some cool memories, like trying to train on Galoperas and then getting cast by literally everyone because the map was so incredibly good. Um, yeah, just great, great memories like that. Yeah. Fix the issue where Lotus Hard Boss only used knockback and teleport abilities when reaching near twenty percent HP in phase three. That is not cool, Nexon. Ah, oh, he's going to keep attacking the whole way through. Good. Good to know. We're also going to get an extra skill to burst him down, though. But that's that's good that they fixed that. Old Scar Scarga Park. Oh, yeah, Scarga runs. I remember that. Being kissed by a bishop. Oh, being kissed by a bishop with a doomsday staff. Oh, that might have been my mom, actually. I got her a doomsday staff because she really liked how it looked. I apologize in, uh, instead of my mom. Um, after version 2.18 update maintenance, all characters in Malaysia maps will be automatically moved to Henesis. All jobs can now select from six skin colors upon crea character creation. Man, the fucking six skin colors. Wait, how many do we have now? Wait, isn't that less than we have now? Oh, for all jobs. Because you have like pale, and then elven, white. white just white. No, yeah, white, and then clay, 
And then we have like, uh, do you have like pink? No, then you just have like brown and black basically, right? But you also have like the super pale one, the like the ghosty pale one that demons have. So you're gonna be able to create like a like a midnight black demon avenger. Interesting. Ten. I wonder which six they're gonna do then. Diversity pog. Yeah. Okay, um, Mezzo Piggy Bank from Maple Tour will be sold until January 26th. The tooltip description will display the date when hovered over. What? What am I supposed to do with my Mezzo coin? With my Maple Tour coins then? There's nothing else worth buying with them. Might as well just remove the coins altogether then. Well, I'm just going to be stocking up on coins. Rip Piggy Bank. Man, there's a lot of stuff getting axed in this game too. I, maybe the update won't actually be that big because I think about 50% of these patch notes is them removing stuff and then 50% is adding stuff. I think it'll, it'll be like equal out. I think the download will be pretty low. The shitty five-star scroll? Yeah, that's literally the only other thing. That's so horrible. Maybe if they added five five stars. Um, the infectious bomb pattern will now be displayed when exiting... Oh, when exiting Lucid. Um, orbs fired by Damien will now disappear when Damien is defeated. Thank you. To avoid being killed the moment you enter, certain bosses will attack after a short delay once they have been summoned. A Lotus Phase 1 Rotating Tracer Panel will start shortly after the Black Heaven Core is summoned and will always be generated at a fixed angle. Yeah, I was going to say, like, because if, if the Lotus Laser attacks later that does not increase your survivability at all. Because the problem is that you don't know where it's going to be, so you can get, like, insta-zapped. The important part here is the fact that it has a fixed angle. Like, that's the important part. Not that they attack later, but... In Ursus, Ursus will howl before attacking. For every attack? Because she kind of howls for some of her attacks now, right? She howls before she um, dashes forward. Th I think that's the only one. And then... Her howl can also signify that she's uh, uh, using bombs. 100 power elixirs? Oh, we're going to have to buy power elixirs on that? Oh. Maybe they're adding something new. Reboot players abuse it too much. They abuse it too much. Do you get 50 mil out of that per day after running that thing for months? Like I don't think that's abuse. Like They're giving you extra money and you only have access to it after you're running it for super long. And then even then, it trickles in at a max of 50 mil per day. For Reboot, that's nothing, 50 mil. But, I uh, I think they mean Howl at the start of the run? Oh, maybe, yeah. Oh, yeah, like a giant announcement, like, okay, ready or not, here I come. Okay, she's going to do a ready or not, here I come growl. All right. I, too, am on Grinder. Who else is on Grinder in the chat? Meet up, meet up guys. Meet up around Grinder. We can have our superior platform of Twitch chat. Who needs Grinder? Um, to the connection between the falling platform pattern and the high voltage pattern in the loads phase two and three have been made more precise. High voltage pattern will be activated sometime after the falling platform pattern in Lotus two, Phase 2 and 3. The energy orbs will now deal damage in more precise intervals during Lotus Phase 2 and 3. Energy orbs. Oh, so no more machine gun getting one tap by them. Cool. The UI will immediately reflect the deducted material items from purchasing in the Ursus shop. Okay, didn't know that there were issues with that. When exiting Ursus fight, all buffs applied to the character will now be removed. Oh, cool. <sighs> Why though? Uh, increase the damage for the Black Mage's unique pattern, which creates a shield in each phase. Okay, that kind of came out of left field. Increase the damage for the Black Mage's unique pattern, which creates a shield in each phase. Okay. Uh, the convenience of entering certain boss monster battles will be improved. Ping Bean quest cannot be started immediately through the light bulb notifier. If none of the party members have a sacrifice when entering the Zakum boss battle, you'll be given the orb. Uh, party leader does not have a dimensional crack, uh, but the party member does. The Pupilatus boss battle can be entered immediately. Information will be supplemented when exiting through the Forgotten Temple Keeper to prevent exiting from the Pink Bean boss battle by a mistake. Okay, I may or may not have done this about twice, okay? <laughs> uh, 
Shit, let me get some water because my throat's getting dry. Oh, I'm actually missing out on some dailies as well. Oh, I already missed out because I already passed reset. Pog. Um, ability reset can no longer be done while in the middle of the Inferno Wolf battle. I don't know why that has to be switched. Number of accessible maps for Magnus. Boss battle has been increased. Okay. You can no Has anyone ever had like, you cannot go to Magnus in this channel, CC please or something? No. You can no longer ride mounts in the Horntail boss battle. Oh, well, I didn't even know that was possible. Logic when exiting after moving through boss matching has been changed. A function that returns you once the map where you were prior to boss matching through the map will now only be valid for 24 hours. Oh yeah, because this happens sometimes. When you go to a boss, you exit, and you get teleported to somewhere completely differently that you didn't even come from. And it's like, Pius who used the boss menu um, got teleported back, and you didn't even use the boss menu. It's so weird. So apparently there was some kind of faulty uh, save state there that they removed, or are going to remove it if it, ex if it exceeds 24 hours. Move the botch mechanic guide for this function will be shown. Alien will be switched uh, from one of the question. Oh my God, so much. You must now be at, at level 101 or higher to participate in flag race. Rip. Monster live, yada, 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 so much stuff. Oh my god, so much stuff. Dream Defender can no longer be entered before the decisive battle quest is complete. Versus Golden Time will be updated ooh, to the following until January 26th at midnight in celebration of the Awake update. UTC 1 to 5 a.m. and UTC 6 to 10 p.m. Um, are we right now? Is it... Uh, is it 1 to 3 and 6 to 8? Yes, so two hours later on both of the sessions. So both the early and the late session. So not not the early one tomorrow or the early one that's starting in 42 minutes. That one is still normal. But then uh, once the patch goes live until January 26th will be two hours longer. Two hours extra at the end. Okay. One time cosmetic land no cares. Character created less than three days ago cannot trade cash items, and characters created less than seven days ago cannot use the gift feature in the cash shop. Rip. System changes. Oh my god, so much stuff. Players can now close the legendary spirit UI with the escape key. Yes! Players can now move between the tabs in the Silent Crusade UI with a tab key. Super necessary. Bug fixes. This should be the longest section in the patch notes. Actually quite a long section in the patch notes. Okay. Uh, known issues. Ursus Golden double mezzo time is not indicated in the completion UI even though the, f the, the fixed the issue. Wait, what? Ursus Golden, let me just reset my brain. Ursus Golden Time double mezzos is not indicated on the completion UI, even though the fix, the issue where impale could only be used double mezzo are being obtained. I think I just had a seizure. Let me just get my pulse here. Hang on. Make sure I'm not having a stroke right now. I think I'm good. There must be something else interfering with uh, with the brain waves here. Um, awake burning events. Terror burn. 
Oh, okay. So the second one is not on the 16th, but is on the 23rd of December. Good to know. So November 18th and then December 23rd for the Terra Bernies. Just as a, you know, reminder to people that um, you will get a box with uh, an extra pet, an extra um, snail, a 30-day snail. Ooh, Pog Champ. Not even a five-hour one, but a 30-day one. That's pretty good. Um, level 30 weapon box and then um, at level 100 mastery box frozen gear that's really good uh, at the at level 100 very good until like 140 and then you switch into pencil or stuff um, and then the reboot box set equips whatever um, which will give you three month duration um, CRE gear at level 150 da, 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 da. Wait, and then Fafnir weapon box open at 200. Wait, are you getting a permanent weapon? Oh, you are getting a permanent weapon at 200? Is that, oh. Huh. Weapon has 90 day duration. Yeah, this one. But th and then at 200 can be opened, you get a Fafni weapon box. So it seems like you're getting a perma weapon. So they removed the part where you get the permanent uh, CRA stuff at 180, but they re, well, not removed because last time we didn't have that either, but they added back the permanent weapon at 200. Okay. Which is, I mean, it's kind of nice because typically the weapon takes the longest to get the permanent version on anyway. But if you're kind of playing this character, 90 days is more than enough to be able to get the permanent version of the of these items. Because you're going to be 200 on like the second day. Not bad. Yeah. I'm sorry, but if you think that like getting a permanent CRA weapon is good when you have already have a temporary one that's like higher up, that's higher upgraded, right? Because it's going to be like Maybe the weapon, well, the weapon is probably also going to come as 12-star enhanced with three epic potential lines, right? It doesn't say that specifically here, though. But you already have a temporary weapon for 90 days. If you can't get your uh, permanent weapon within these 90 days, then I don't know what you're doing with your character, which means that this one is completely obsolete, right? Because you have 90 days to get your permanent CRA. You get to 200 on, like, the second day, or uh, the first or the second day with a Terra Burn, and then you can start doing CRA the 10th day. So then you have 80 days of trying where you will probably be over level 220 and will probably burst down CRA. Can you destroy it or trace it or transfer trace to permanent? If it's, uh, no, no, you cannot um, transfer or whatever with the, with the temporary stuff. You can't salvage that uh, upgrade in any way. Maybe they want to hit it and then quit it. Yeah, that's possible. Um, okay, and then, so Eternal Flame title, so that's 30 days with the big arcane power, extra bonus experience, uh, and then extra rewards after 200. So reach level 200 to get 20 nodes, 205 to get 20 extra nodes, and two experience node stones, and 210 for 50 nodes and three experience node stones. If you get to 210 on that Terraborn character, you'll get an extra 90 nodes in total and five experience nodes. That's a that's a good start. It's a good start if you're trying to um, if you're trying to main the character or at least go further than the um, or go to two ten. One thing, um, the four hundred IQ thing here. If you're doing the terror burn on a character just because you're trying to get to level two ten and just because you're trying to get the level three link, what you can do is open all the nodes, um, extract all the nodes, then make node stones with them. Uh, remember, that's the thing you can do, right? When you talk to the node master here. Because uh, these node stones are untradeable, right? So you, you, they're like stuck on the character. But if you're not going to be playing the character, what you can do is you can do node crafting and then craft node stone here with 35 shards. And then those node stones will be tradable. So 
you don't have to feel too forced that you're not going to be able to use this uh, value pretty much because if you can get to 200 and you have the temporary CRA and all of that, you're going to get to 210 in no time with the same character. And then those 90 nodes are going to feel like they're kind of wasted. But you can open up the nodes, extract them all, make the tradable node stones uh, through the crafter dude right here. And then those can go into the storage and trade to another character that might need them. So it's lower efficiency, of course, but you'll still be able to claim some of the efficiency that way if you're not going to continue the character past level 210. Can you dismantle the experience node? No, but you can use the experience node on another node and then dismantle that node after you leveled it up with the experience node. Again, that's, not, that's really bad efficiency-wise, but it's better than nothing. I'm deleting my Hayato and burning it just for the nodes. <laughs> I, you, you could also do that. Um, if it takes you, like, let's say you have a level 200 Hayato, um, but it you get like two nodes an hour, then essentially this is 45 hours worth. And remaking your character if to 200, uh, to 210, if that takes you, I don't know, it takes you 20 hours, then you're gaining 25 hours by just deleting your character and remaking it. So it, it's more efficient to do it that way. As long as you don't have a lot of gear, of course, that takes a lot of time to gather. But you'll also get temporary CRA and everything. It might be just an up, just objectively an upgrade for your character, for sure. 600 mil for 50 star scroll, any good or is that bad? Um, if you want to know if an upgrade scroll is good or bad, just check exclamation mark Starforce in the chat. Throw it into the calculator and see what the expected cost of doing it is on event, off event. See what kind of number it would cost you. If the So what you can expect for a scroll is that it's probably a little bit more expensive, but it'll be guaranteed and just a one-click fix, right? Uh, versus an event where it might be a little bit cheaper on average, but there's, of course, the off chance that you're lucky or unlucky, and then you end up spending more. And you end up spending more time because it fails, it passes, all of that stuff. So whenever you're wondering if a um, tear-up scroll is worth it, just pop it to the calculator, add in all the numbers of the items that you would use it on, and then see how much it would cost uh, on average. Uh, is there any mention of increased droplet rate? I have not seen that yet, but I have not read everything. We could control F for the things that you guys want to make sure are in there in a little bit as we get closer to the end. So I will definitely do that. So so please keep your questions till the end of the presentation. Um, okay, Burning World. Um, okay, the only thing I need to know is... Burning World Restrictions. World Leap. Non reboot worlds only. Okay, cool. So Burning World is garbage. Cool. Awake events. Uh, celebration event that was already announced, I think. Gift drop on November 18th after the maintenance. Free stuff for everyone. Cool shit. Um, Awake Awakening Scroll. All of this will be added into the event calendar as well. Uh, I'll, I'll do all of that tomorrow while we're uh, going through the hour long, hours along maintenance. Um, all of the stuff that's, um, are we 17, 18? It is the 18th. We are hiding this row and we are hiding these two. And we are fattening this guy. Boop. There we go. And we are readjusting that. It's a little scuffed, I know, but you know, that's just just who I am. Just a little scuffed. Uh boom, boom, boom. There we go. Pog. Um yeah, all this will be completely populated with all of the stuff that we're going through now, of course. Um Oh, so this is that big scroll where you can get that ring at the end, right? Um, there's a back gong scroll, chun gong scroll, man gong scroll, and the completed scroll gives you a title that stat for 14 days, 50 all, 2500 HP, MP20, weapon, magic attack, 30% boss and ID. That's pretty much the same as the haste title now, I think, which hopefully you guys got because that ended 30 minutes ago. Uh, coin shop, ooh. Okay, let me actually control F for droplet. We can see the droplets are here. Those are the only entrance entrance for droplets. So that seems like that did not uh, change. Um, 
There seems to be no mention of the droplet uh, drop rate increase. It might be one of those things that is either not mentioned, but will just passively be in the game because they don't even, they just didn't put it in the patch notes. That's happened in the past. It might be that it's only going to be part of the December 16th update, uh, or it might be that it's not happening at all. But anyone who is training, uh, a lot of people train, a lot of people farm, and whether or not it is working and whether or not the drop rate went up will be known as soon as like six hours or so after the patch. Because the change that KMS had was that their drop rate went up by about 400 to 450%. So instead of getting, um, they usually get like one every two hours and then they went from like four to five, uh, no, four, it went up by th by 300 to 350%. So it went, it went to like four to five, uh, like four and a half on average per two hours instead. So if you get like one an hour, a little bit more than one an hour, and you suddenly go up to like six on average, like that's that's very, very noticeable. So so we should know pretty quickly if that's gonna work or not. Uh, so this is that scroll, the enhancement scroll. So it's gonna work a little bit differently for the rings. Uh, Reboot is just gonna get the full ring coupon. That's gonna be 40 all stat, 4,000 HP, MP, 25 weapon and magic attack. So for everyone who has a newish character that you wanna main, this is gonna be like your strongest ring for quite a while. Eventually it'll probably turn into a drop rate ring, but until then it'll be amazing. Um, if you're a Kana, this will be really, really good because you scale off of the HP and the MP as well. As a DA, it's gonna seem like it's really good, but it's not that good because the HP on equips gets cut in half for your damage calculation, etc., etc. Um, but a useful ring, not star forceable, but uh, potentialable, potentialable, of course. Um, coin shop memes. Um, you can buy the symbols quantity of 50. Oh, wow. There's going to be a lot of coins that you can spend. <laughs> um, 74 sphere symbol quantity of 50. Oof. Mysterious boxes and node stones, quality of 20. They say quality this whole time? Quantity. Um, trade boost potions. Please don't waste your coins on any of that. These are 300 too. I don't know who puts in these numbers. One trade boost potion is the value of 10 symbols. Uh, 10 vanishing journey symbols? I don't know. Um, interesting items. Uh, so no heart, I think, right? If we control F for heart. Um, Permanent Heart of the Ice Mount coupon. That's not what we're looking for. Uh, oh, there's a permanent Lidium Heart connected to the Rock Spirit Roid coupon, which is a reward. Uh, oh, you have to buy like 10 tickets. All right, right, it's not really a reward. It's just what you're actually getting. It's just what you're actually going for. And then the other stuff is just random instances of the word heart, right? Yeah, okay. Um, cool. Where were we? Here. Uh, boxes, boxes of stuff. Uh, lots of non-reboot items that reboot just have no access to. Like this whole shop is pretty much all non-reboot only. Um, ten reboot mezzo pouches, one hundred coins. This says reboot mezzo pouches again, so I wonder if it's going to be the big ones or just the small ones. Uh, when they put this prefix here, that always always makes me wonder. Do, 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 do. And let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Can we raise the flame? The mezzo shop is probably what most people are wondering for because the coin shop seems like it's going to be unchanged amounts with just so much stuff. Uh, hopefully someone makes another one of those uh, calculators again with all of the items. You remember last time there was a, one of the big shops, somebody made those. Uh, there was two people, two people made that. Um, was a lot of work, but was really cool, looked good, interactive, all of that stuff. You just got a timber uh, ent on your on your map. Yeah, it's the last one, dude. Well, one of the last ones. You still got like 14 hours until the patch, but... Uh, well, 15 and a half. Um, but who's counting? Um, Mezzo Shop. Let's go. Uh, Karma, Eternal, Rebirth, Flame, 50 mil, non-reboot only. Where are the reboot stuff? Where are the reboot stuff? Nice. Good grammar. Pog. Um, a cult cube? Wow. 
one mil for an occult cube? Are you serious? Limited quantity of a hundred? What? An occult cube is like 50k, dude. What is... Okay. Um, sure. Sure. 10 day duration. Beautiful. And then Arcane River droplet stones. 50 mil each. Of course, a droplet is worth about 50 occult cubes. That seems about... Um, yeah, that seems a very fair realistic exchange rate for those two items. Uh, oh, you can buy Shadow Knight coins as well with a quantity of... Limited quantity of 200. Um, stone origin droplets, also 50 mil each, of course. And you can buy 50 of each. Interesting. All right, so that's two and a half bill per uh, stack if you want to buy those out. So five bill in total there for those droplets. And then uh, Chunhee's Mezzo Shop. Uh, Karma star, star, 15 star enhancement, 600. Oh, yeah, so that's the one that someone was asking for. So make sure you check the, the calculator to see if that's worth it for you. I don't know what the restrictions are. Uh, we're going to have to see that in the shop itself. But usually these kind of scrolls are uh, for items up to level 160 and not for superior grade items, of course. Um, blah, 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 blah. Android sensor, clip, pedal, headband. Preppy suspenders, cool. Um, boba chair, oh yeah, yeah, of course, of course, Jenny would go crazy, yeah. No heart, no, no heart in the shop. Missed the flame. I'm looking for it, but I don't fucking see it. Must be blind. Non reboot. Oh, here is a reboot. Oh, there we go. Karma Eternal Rebirth Flame, two hundred fifty mil with a limit of forty. That is that is so steep. They do know that we have regular powerful flames for ten mil each, right? I mean, an Eternal Flame is a little bit better than a powerful flame, so you it would be a little bit higher than that, but but twenty five times the amount. Like, we have an infinite supply of powerful flames. If you buy out, if you buy these out, that's 10 bill in flames. That's a thousand flames. Like, you could choose 40 eternals or a thousand powerful flames. I don't know. Like, do we have any math majors in the chat? Can you calculate how low your IQ has to be to? even consider that to being an alter alternative is that i'm, go I'm going to come back to the math geeks in the chat in a little bit to see the to find it, to see if they can find that number i'll be interested to see math magicians assemble <laughs> 17 that, that sounds pretty close pretty sure 17 is like the iq of a of a, a raven or something Error 404, numbers this low, not found. Okay. Um, okay, and then the shoot, the bamboo shoot shop, which I assume that the bamboo shoots are like an item that you can get one per day as long as you cap points for the day or coins, whatever it is. I don't know if it's going to be a point cap or a coin cap. I think it's going to be coin cap this time. Um, but they'll probably explain how you can get those bamboo shoots and everything. Um, so these... Pills, what do these do? Uh, arcane power, 60 minutes of arcane power plus 30, 60 minutes of star force plus 20, 60 minutes of plus 50% chance of a monster being added to the monster collection. Use some weird shit, okay. 60 minutes of double experience does not stack with other experience buffs. Okay, so this counts as a coupon. As a one hour, 2x coupon, limited quantity of three per day. Huh. Physical enhancement, 60 minutes of 1,000 HP and MP. Damage against normal monsters was 30% and 20% crit rate. Huh. Not bad. Don't forget to claim your pre-awake rewards. My pre-awake rewards? I'm gonna pre- Who's preying? 
the wake warm up box this oh yeah shit I have to oh damn You can only claim this prize until 11.24. Oh no, I have time. You have another week to claim these, right? You think it? You think the maintenance is gonna be extended by 140 hours? Even I think that that's maybe a little bit, that might be a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> Seven day nodes. Maybe. Yeah, there there is a chance. <laughs> People are sure. Hey, you never know, dude. Okay. Um, Hyper Teleport Rock coupon for a day. Blah, blah, blah. Monster Park. So much stuff in here. Okay, decoration shop. So that's going to be chairs, mounts, Android with a heart. Um, and since there is no fairy heart, and I don't know if we'll see... Wondroid next year because it seems that there's at least a two-year gap between that one, but you know who knows um, Then this lithium heart might be like a consolation prize at least for some people who don't have a heart at all so um, Was it like the the, the cowardly lion or something? Um, damage skin the awake damage skin untradeable item expires February 2nd at uh, why do why do why do these things expire people put so much work in that why would you delete that tranquil sage outfit set a box hmm, interesting um oh god no more flag race nx oof what is that push yourself in rice that is a big old. Wait, it's like a whale, but it's got the color scheme of a killer whale. Something going on there. This guy's getting a massage, but he's completely covered in a blanket. What is he getting? Like a hand massage? Um. Oh, this damaged skin. This unit damaged skin is pretty hot, actually. I like that glitchy. Uh, the glitchy is maybe a little bit too much. I like the, the glitchy color scheme, but I don't know about that line through the letters. I'm not 100% on that, but it looks, I guess it looks still okay considering damage skins. I don't like the, cr the crit effect in front. Oh, ah. It ruins the damage skins, man. There should be an option to turn those on or off. Like you sh I feel like you should have the option to, to, to pick there. Uh, this is a lot. Um... Sage Rock Training Grounds, is that where you just do as much damage as possible to get like bonus coins every day? We're not affected by the daily coin capacity. Oh, we're gonna have, yeah, it seems like we're gonna have the point coin, uh, we're gonna have to talk about what the difference is between coins and points again, okay guys? All right, if something gives you points, it goes into your point limit. Point limit is per character. Okay, every character has their own point limit per day. Your points get turns into coins, but you don't get coins from the stuff, right? You get coins from the points and you get points from the stuff. Why is that important? Because point limits are per character per day. Coin limits are from specific extra events and those are per account per day. They're very different. So when someone says coin cap, What they mean probably is coin from point cap because there's no actual coin cap because there's going to be a lot of extra sources like that daily quest that can let you go over the coin from point cap, over your point cap, right? So if you say coin cap, technically what that means is that you did your point cap and you did all of the extra quests that all give you extra coins all on one character, right? That means you capped coins on one character. Right? So you can only do that on one character per account per day. And why that's important is because you want to come up with kind of a plan to see in the shop what you want to buy on which character. Based on that, you want to see how many coins you want to accumulate per day. And therefore, see if it's enough to just do point capping or if you need to do extra quests that give you extra coins on a character. And if it has to be the same character every day or if you can switch around so that you have enough buying power for all of the items you want at the end of the event and that can also depend on once we get to the sunny sundays if there are going to be 
like 30% offs in the shop, which there might be. We'll, we'll see that in a little bit. Right, so that's why it's important. Important, and I, when I will keep bringing it up because there's a there's a big distinction between the two, and it, it matters for where you get your points. No shop sales apparently. Um, there might be like double. The limit of awakening coins you can obtain is doubled. <laughs> but there's no limit of coins. <laughs> why are they making it so confusing for people? You mean the limit of points is uh, doubled. You don't mean the limit of coins. Because there is no coin limit. Uh, this is why people are confused. Because you keep confusing people. <sighs> Say anything about zero? No, zero is most likely not going to be in this update whatsoever. And is going to be part of the December 16th release. Uh, that is called Glimmer Flicker of Light. So you're going to be waiting for that. Um, okay, so there's mini games um, that are probably going to give points, not coins, but points, right? Uh, oh no, not this one. This one, this one actually gave gives coins, uh, and then this one gives points. We have reached the awakening coin capacity, but the, but, the, but it isn't. There is no coin capacity because you can get these and then you can go over. It's like if you reach your limit, except for the thing that you can do to increase to go, bypass your limit. Which means that it wasn't the limit. Hmm. If only it was like uniform. It'd be so good. <clears throat> yeah, it's probably going to be the same as before where you get one point for every... Uh, sorry, we get one coin for every 100 points. Uh, and I'm also assuming that you don't get actual physical coins, but that they just show up in a counter, you know, like with a... Well, we saw it in the test server, right? It was like the bar and then the counter on the side that shows you how many um, coins you have access to on the character that you're on. And on the on the bar, it should say how many points you have gathered so far to the next uh, coin. And if you hover over it, I think it should say how many points out of the current... Uh, point to max of the day that you've gathered on the character that you're on. Will playing on multiple characters get me more coins compared to playing on one? Um, every co every character has their own total of how many coins they have access to. Um, and like I said before, if there's a point cap, point caps are per character, which means that every character can get however many points they can within the point max of a single day. If there's any kind of mechanic where you like rank up and increase your point cap possible for the day and everything, that means that every character will be able to get more points for the day, which will translate to more coins from points. But if you have something that gives you coins directly, that's per account. So you have to choose a character every day to get that extra bonus on. Uh, typically your highest level character because it's most likely going to be something like you have to do more damage or the monsters get a higher level as you proceed yada 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 something like that so the higher the level the character is the more efficiency you get out of something that gives you coins versus something that gives you points does that make sh make sense sar sharpness i will also make sure that all of the events here everything gets redirected into the event calendar so that's going to be under exclamation mark events um i'll be working on that mainly tomorrow during the maintenance and everything so right now it's not going to be up to date but you know if you save the link or make sure that you know where to find it then tomorrow you'll have all of the events listed here uh direct links to the patch notes so you can just click it and see what the uh, information is and also um, colored by week when they're going to be available so you know when to worry about what. Are there any job nerfs or buffs in this? A lot of them right on our wheel. Yes, a lot of them. I didn't go into all of the details, but here in the beginning, so these are all the new skills, this stuff here. We mainly read the non-KMS ones because those were the most important to know. Um, and then these are the jet revamps, and then here are all the job balance changes. Until here. So are there any changes? A few. Yes, a few. Like 40 pages of it. Um, not 40, sorry, like 25. Um, 
Okay, and then bingo. So this is just another mini game. Sunny Sundays. We see a pink bean and Pepe chat emoticon coupon. Oh yeah, I forget we have emoticons in this game. Um, extra experience from runes, from combo orbs, double awakening coins from awake events. And limit of awakening coins you can obtain is doubled. So what they mean is that you get double points from things that you give you points and double coins from things that give you coins. There you go. Um, and that your limit for awakening points is doubled. Is what that means. Uh, and then double experience for Polo, Frito, Inferno Wolf. Um, Oh, that seems to be every Sunday, right? Yeah, that's every Sunday. Okay. And then, so week two, November 29th, we can, yeah, it's just more from Polo, Polo Frito and Infernable, so that's not very important. Uh, and then week three has 50% off ability resets. Okay, so if you're going to work on your inner ability, make sure you check exclamation mark inner ability, or IA for short, both work, uh, in the chat to get information on how to get to your best in slot inner ability in, on any character in Reboot. Um, which ones those are and what all the possible outcomes of interability are uh, in case you have to uh, check that list because you might be tempted to use maybe a chaos circulator, which you probably don't want to use, but there might be a few fringe situations where it's actually good. And then 50% off spell trace enhancements, so that's for non-reboot. And then week four, December 13th has, to December 13th, this is like two weeks before Christmas. Uh, that means Christmas is on a Friday, Friday and Saturday. No, Thursday and Friday. Um, receive double experience coupon, 15 minutes times three and 30% off Star Force events. Okay. So only a 30% off so far. And then another spell trace fever time that does not coincide with a 24 hour two X for reboot memes. Um, so a 30% off on the 13th of December. Okay. All the Sunday Sundays are also going to be in the event list. So what are the most important things in this list? Um, Malaysia is gone. Big Fs. Um, no fairy heart in the shop. Eternal flames for reboot are going to be 250 mil each, which is a highway robbery. Don't buy that. Just if you can't resist buying flames and just buy powerful ones, is not not a good idea. Uh, Terburn apparently gives a uh, box for a permanent weapon at level 200 and can give you up to 90 extra nodes and five experience node stones if you get to 210 uh, on the character within the event period. And the first event period is from November 18th to December 20. Second, and the second uh, terror burn is going to be from December 23rd to January 26th. Um, then there are no 5, 10, 15 uh, Star Force events coming at least in the next four weeks. But remember, this is only a four week batch, so we got right after that, or is another a four week batch. So there's a lot of um, this will be over before you know it, and then immediately we'll have the chance to have another one here. So there is a 30% off, which is historically very good for either going from zero star all the way up to 22. If you have a lot of backups, average boom of like 10 or 11. Um, well, I think statistically like eight, but make sure you have at least 10 or 11 items, right, for the outliers. Um, but ideally very good for star forcing up to 15 stars, which is good that we have a 30% off now before a 5, 10, 15, because you want to get everything to 15 stars during a 30% off and then wait there until we have a 5, 10, 15 and then boost it from 15 to 17. Hopefully there'll be a little bit of time in between. So you have some time to recoup some of your money. Um, the droplets in the shop confirmed 50 of each kind for 50 mil each. Um, what else, what else? Um, was there anything major that I'm like completely omitting? What are sort of big, th I mean, giant shop, but that's, you're just gonna have to go in game and look at all the stuff because it's so much. Uh, we will get a chance to mega burn another character after our terror burn. That does not look like it. It does not look like we're getting any kind of mega burn coupons. Just the two terror burns. Just only two terror burns. If 
Fafnir. Oh, did I say Abzo? I meant Fafnir, sorry. I might, must have brain farted, yeah. At level 200, the coupon for a permanent uh, Fafnir weapon. Yeah, if I said Abzo, I misspoke. Is up available from day one or do you need to rank up to access it? The shops are... Uh, oh yeah, and then the Burning World is only for non-reboot again. So you don't have to worry about that if you're in reboot. Uh, the shops access... Uh, the scroll starts on the 18th. Where are the shops again? Yeah, November 18th after maintenance. You just have to be level 101 or above and have completed the Awake Time of Awakening quest, which I think is just a um, an information quest. Just you click it, read it, click accept, and, and done, I think. Do you know why we're unable to have Burning World for reboot? Um... Not sure, actually. I can like fabricate some reasons, but they haven't given like an official reason on why that is. I will assume that it's just a coding thing, that the world leap is just something that they, um, I think a world just has to be hard coded as either a reboot world or a non reboot world. And they just don't have, I think, access to it, be able to let you world leap between a reboot and a non reboot world ever. So I think that's why they have to pick one of the two is my assumption but there's no official announcement in in that way uh they updated the page did they okay they 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 do that sometimes very quickly um what day is today oh it's the 18th um control f update Oh yeah, the reboot box updated. Oh yeah, two extra hours of Ursus. Ah, these two here. Fix the issue where the basic damage skin unit displays an incorrect graphic when used. Oh yeah, the thumb and the okay hand symbol. So that's going to the actual basic unit damage skin. And fix the issue where the damage skin had untranslated text in its description tooltip. Apparently that's what they added because that's the only updated that I could find. That is, any updates are always mentioned like this in brackets and in bold so that you can find them easily. I want to keep the thumbs up. Yeah, I, again, I feel like they should give you the option of like, do you want to switch it or do you want to keep it? Reboot Burning World would be pretty neat. Uh, it would be super crowded, that's for sure. And that would also make it so that people who are not going on there will have a little bit more space to play on the game. So I would say that's pretty good. Can we make a zero and reboot now? No mention of zero. You can control F for zero here. Um, well, zero is mentioned a, a lot, of course, but uh, zero is not available yet on uh, reboot. Zero is most likely going to be part of the second update, Flicker of Light, um, on December 16th. I kind of like the thumbs up. When I saw it the first time, I thought it would actually look pretty cool, yeah. But nobody wants to... If you're looking for a unit damage skin and you get a thumbs up, it just it feels like a middle finger up instead, you know? It just feels like the, the wrong... You're just getting the wrong thing. You're not getting what you, what you ordered. And then it, it can be hard to to be happy with what you have when it's not what you wanted. You thought Zero was already available in Reboot? No, in KMS it has been, but not in GMS, no. So we have three updates for this winter. No, two. Um, we have an update on the 18th, and then we have an update on the 16th, and then we have a maintenance on the 2nd of... 2nd of December? The 3rd. We have a maintenance on the 3rd of December, and that's the one that's going to allow us to start switching out our Golex pendants for uh, bel uh, the Golex belts, and um, the final, um, all of the stuff is going to end. All of the big events and everything is going to end on January 26th. So I'll have to add a bunch of weeks here. Uh, like boom, boom. Uh, insert one below, that kind of stuff. You know, boom, boom, boom. Two below. Four, four, three, 28, 28. Maybe one more? Ah, oh, fuck it, no. 
any other questions oh yeah so the other thing main thing for the people who aren't here uh the superior pendants and the superior belts if you have two superior pendants that you rely on to complete your four set superior uh set or you will rely on two of them for the four set superior set so it's not necessary that you have all four equips yet and you would like to trade one pendant on your account for a belt then you have to make sure that you are equipping at least two superior pendants on a character that you would like to exchange with so that you can exchange one of those one of those two pendants that you had equipped for a belt you will transfer uh, certain stats which you can look up control f superior uh, which you can read here um and then you will get a quest in the star tab that you can uh, complete once you trade it in, which you complete with any other character in your account to pick up the belt. So what you could do, for example, uh, if you're going to be playing Zero and you're pretty sure that Zero is going to make it to reboot, uh, what you can do now, if you have a spare pendant, for example, you could Star Force it now, get it to 20, 21, 22, whatever, and you know how, how ballin' you guys are, uh, and equip it now before the uh or not now but like have it equipped once the game goes down for maintenance and then afterwards you know just do other stuff on your account uh but once the exchange becomes available on december 3rd where is it mentioned here december 3rd then you can trade that one pendant in and you'll be able to pick up the belt on another character until january 26th so that should give you access to superior items with starforce and prepped on other characters, if you are so inclined, of course. What's my assessment of DK with the new skill? Um, I think the DK skill fits their kit well and complements it. Um, however, just like with Final Pack, the cooldown is very long, which I think makes it... Um, just, it gives it so little uptime that I don't know how reliable it is. That being said, though, like the first person who was able to clear hard will in reboot was a Dark Knight, so it doesn't seem. It seems like their kit does have the capabilities. All you got to do is just throw enough mezzos at your character. Are you sure they didn't make any changes to the new skills compared to KMS? No, I'm not 100% sure of that because it, there's just too much. There's just too many. I could sit here for like four hours going through, like combing through all of the skills. We can go a little bit more in depth tomorrow, uh, but I think we already took... Um, I think we already took almost two hours. I, I skimmed this as hard as I possibly could without going like too super into detail, and I think we already took two hours to get through this. Um... I don't see why they would really mess with these numbers, though. I think the most important ones... In the past, when we looked at this, they just copy-pasted everything. The ones that they didn't were the non-KMS classes, so that's why we went over those. We went over um, the Hayato, the Kana, the Beast Chamber, and the Jet. Which, those numbers seem to be the exact same numbers, at least, that I remember from the test server. Always on the blah, blah. Mech changes are nice, but they killed AFK farming. Mech has that uh, has those rocket boosters under his feet now and can uh, float around the map with a with a booster bar. That's going to be pretty interesting to see how that changes uh, how that changes everything. Always on the floor. Uh, anything else any other questions chat they didn't copy the heart no apparently from what i saw there were some mentions by curios but the the second community manager that there were some issues in, with uh with implementing the heart which um which basically stopped them from being able to do it i d i don't know what that means it's pretty vague so explore warriors get better mobility. Yes, up jumps and a little bit of a dash. And they will be rolled into the boost node with the rush skill. So I think it might be likely that heroes will actually start using a second um, 
a second set of boost nodes where now they just use uh, Rising Rage, Raging Blow, and Final Attack, and they might use an extra one for Shout, Puncture, and Rush later on in the game, maybe. To, uh, so you can like jump attack with Shout and make sure you get a full attack, jump with Puncture with, that has a way better hitbox now, and that your Rush plus your jump attack um, combination and up jump will actually deal enough damage to also kill monsters is kind of like my prediction there but we'll have to see what heroes do of course the iq calculations you were looking for oh how much was it smilly uh what's the difference between stone origin and arcana droplets uh one of the ones is combined with the droplets from lucid to make the coins to buy items from the lucid shop in lacaline and the other ones are combined with the drops from will to make will coins that you can use to buy items from the shop in asfera Issues, Kappa. Hopefully, one droid right after a wake to make up for the missing heart. Yeah, I think that would be great if they did that because not only will people forgive them for not putting the heart in the shop, but they will actually, on top of it, be happy that they didn't, um, because otherwise they would they would have bought it and then they would have wasted a bunch of money. And instead, if they wait two months and then get a heart that's way easier to achieve and way cheaper, then people will not only overlook it but like welcome it so um that would be great if they did that but i don't know if they just want to roll out wandroid without actually having a new season with new content i don't think they just want to just throw repeat wandroid in there that doesn't seem like something that they would do it, but maybe he said circumstances that he was not aware of oh okay uh regarding the thing at the flame is worth of roughly twice the IQ of the average trump supporter Okay, so like, okay, so like mid forties. Uh, time to main beast tamer. Uh, yeah, so I didn't see beast tamer. Um, I didn't see beast tamer creation anywhere. So I am just going to go ahead with my guesstimation that beast tamer and zero will both be back for creation during the December sixteenth. But again, that's just my guess. There's no guarantees on there, so. Do you know why they're taking out the piggy bank? No clue. Um, when they're taking something out like that without any kind of announcement, my guess is maybe that there is some kind of um, um, abuse. What, what's the word I'm looking for? Or some kind of exploit maybe connected to it that that I'm not aware of, where people are just like using it infinitely to make like a whole bags of money or something. And rather than trying to fix the exploit, it's easier to just remove the item or something. Uh, but again, that's just pure guesstimation on my part because I haven't heard anything surrounding that item being either controversial or exploit exploitable in any way. So I don't know. Jokes are never as funny as that. True. Um, always on that blah blah. Keep it to yourself. What do you think about Dawn Warrior? Um, the new skill seems really cool uh, and really capitalizes and meshes well with the kit where they switch between the stances a lot um, to create a bunch of those explosions. And like we saw in the announcement video, not this one right here in the beginning of the video, but um, or the beginning of the patch notes, but the ones that we've seen over the last weeks is that the hitbox for that explosion is actually really nice. So not only does it give you free extra uh, bossing damage, but it also allows you to just kill more mobs without really changing your rotations at all. Um, so that's a cool thing. The new, that the new fifth job skill isn't something you have to put on a key or charge specifically, but it just happens and you know it's just free extra damage. That being said, in general, I feel like the Dawn Warrior kind of falls off towards like the end end game. Um, it just doesn't seem like a super special and versatile class. It just it, It's just a class that does a lot of damage, but it doesn't seem to have any big specific things that only it can do, which allows for it to like shine in certain situations. And I think that's the main thing that Dawn Warriors are missing, where it doesn't, like it has that jump dash, which is kind of unique, I guess. Um, but it, um, it has very flashy skills and everything like that, but when it comes to the output of the damage and the the, the, the utility and bosses and everything, that's another thing, right? It has no utility whatsoever. Like, it doesn't boost the team in any way. Um, 
which means which is not necessarily a bad thing but it means that you have to excel at something else to compensate for that and it doesn't seem like the dawn warrior really excels at anything else to the point where it compensates for that lack i think that and the fact that the high ping makes it pretty unplayable in in at least part of the situations if you're playing from eu that already takes um that already takes away a bunch of potential players from playing the class to its its full extent yeah we would to slow down the progression um i don't know the the piggy bank gives you 50 mil per day which in reboot is nothing um for what was it 28 days um oh no for 20 for 20 days out of out of a possible 28 right for 20 days so it's a total of one bill that's spread over 20 days um one bill seems like a lot but if you know it's 50 mil a day it's it's nothing it's like one uh, one boss crystal that you sell, right? Um, and in order to get it, you have to clear 140 times. So that means if you do all the extra entries, you have to clear it um, as well for 20 days and do seven runs a day. Most people don't do that. They only do two runs a day, which means you only get to buy, get you only get to take one every 70 days. So for over two months, you have to gather to get it so that you can get 50 mil per day for 20 days. Like it is in no way like oh my god if you get this then you basically don't have to play the game anymore you're just getting rich while you're sleeping like it's i don't know i mean and in the same breath the eternal flames for reboot are 250 mil i i just i wonder who comes up with these things because it doesn't feel balanced towards the server whatsoever if if we're being honest an eternal flame should probably be um i'm thinking if 25 is Probably 25 mil for reboot would probably make sense. I don't know. I, it seems like they just looked at non reboot was um, um, Karma, Eternal, Rebirth, the Flame. Like it's 50 mil for non reboot. Which means that in reboot, therefore, it should be five times the amount, which is weird because we have six times the drop rate. Shh, don't tell them. We actually have six times the meso drop rate, guys. So even within that logic, it should be 300. But don't tell them. Don't tell them, guys. Um, yeah, I don't know. That seems to be the logic behind it. Um, but of course, you know, with the value of meso and non reboot and everything getting 50 mil on non-reboot is i wonder if getting 50 mil on non-reboot is the same difficulty of getting 250 mil on reboot i really wonder because i haven't played non-reboot in so long maybe that is equally difficult and maybe for the scaling that makes sense but like i like we talked about before like the additional thing you have to think about is the fact that you can get the powerful flames for less than 10 mil and yes eternal are better but they're not that much better they're not 25 times as good, right? Or 20 times as good, which, you know, with exponential increase of utility, blah, 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 you know, accounts for that. But How many outers till Awake comes out? Well, till it actually comes out, we don't know because the patch hasn't even started yet. But the patch is going to start in about 15 hours, a little bit less. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, and one mil for the occult cubes. That's, uh, yeah, I, I kind of brain farted on that one, too. One mil for an occult cube, which honestly, if you look at the value of just revealing the potential, um, one mil isn't that much compared to that. But if you look at how many of these you can already get just from doing some bosses, to to even try to insinuate that that value of an occult cube in your inventory equates to a million is just weird. Because I've thrown away probably about eight or nine stacks of occult cubes, and they stack for three thousand. Like to insinuate that I've just like thrown away something that's essentially worth thirty bill. Um, yeah, there's just there's no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or the, or the exchange rate of like oh one occult cube equals fifty droplets. And like really, you kill one elite boss, you get fifteen of these. Like that's a third of a droplet for every elite boss. Really? Okay. 
I mean, people will take that, dude. If, if for every if for every three elite bosses you kill, you get a droplet. You're gonna have some elite boss hunters on your hands for sure. Everyone, they're gonna be scouring the maps. Uh, if you have Meserid gear and frenzy, you can get like 500 mil an hour, depending on the class. Yeah, because I thought people in non reboot were actually because of the rates changing so much. You know, when the when the when the bots when people were actually had to get the money themselves instead of just like going online and credit carding their way into becoming rich in uh, non reboot um that they actually had to they discovered that if they were actually farming that it was way more um financially um sound or efficient whatever um to just make a farming character and it doesn't seem like they're only making a sixth of the amount of money that um that reboot is making right they can really make 500 though. That's way more than I thought. I thought they'd be, they'd be stuck at like like 300 or something. Like 250 or something, right? You should expect it to be like a sixth. Well, so maybe even 200. 200 to 250. How can I make 500? Is that really the difference that a uh, that a frenzy totem makes? Da, da. Oh, because there are a lot of buffs that you guys have that we also have that makes the time six factor go away, of course. Because if you have 100% and then you have 600% and then you had 300% to both, you go to 400 and to 900, which means you only have like a little bit more than double. Yeah, that makes sense. Because it's additive, not multiplicative. Huh. Yeah, exactly. So the times five... Pr cost makes no sense for that reason yeah exactly and the vac bats i've seen that vac bats actually make quite a difference because you have to do way less moving around the map and you can focus on killing way more while going at a very uh low cost of your of your income from looting let me set my cold cubes for 100k each then yeah i'll take that dude 300 mil per stack i'll sell a few stacks for that i'll gladly make more bossers if i can npc my occult cubes Is having Arcana the best way to progress in a decent rate in Reboot or just getting Mesogear is the way to go? Um, well, you have the words best and decent there. You're going to have to quantify those words more for me to be able to answer that question for you. Na, 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 na. Right? Because decent rate implies that you have in your brain... Uh, you have you have like a certain idea of how much time you have available, how much time you want to spend, how far you want to go, how quickly you want to get there. That all implies decent. Like I don't, I don't know what all of those numbers are and how quickly you want to get there, right? And then the best way it can be if that's what you enjoy doing and if you have the time again to allocate for that. Um, but mainly if you enjoy doing that. Um, is what best comes down to because if you, that's something that is like mind-numbingly boring to you um and also it kind of it kind of ingrained is that is that right now it might be yeah but that's not meaning that it'll always be or that it'll be um th that it won't be changed somewhere in the future of course right because nails that stick out tend to get hammered out uh hammered down and kind of farming is definitely still a nail that sticks out so if there's anything that's got to give, that's probably one of the first things that gets in it. Um, sorry, that gets um, that gets hammered down again. And with all of that being said, I don't do it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that works for everyone. I have the amount of time I can throw at it, um, of course, but at the other hand, I'm also very inefficient with the time that I do throw at it. So somebody who does it more efficiently might get similar results in way less time. So. Hey, what up, Chavez? I'm doing great. Um, I was thinking that I might get sick, but I'm kind of not, so I'm happy with that. I'm not feeling 100%, but I'm also, I'm feeling like 90, like 90%, you know? Um, well, maybe a little bit less, but like 85%, um, 83 and a half. Um, but um, definitely not like going towards being like super sick and weak and anything. So I'm still almost able to do my 20 sets of uh, 20 reps of push-ups. I, I did 19 the two times that I did try, so not too bad. And looking at the patch notes, so lots of information here. Can you make a character you already made? Uh, can you make a character you are made already a burning character? No. Character creation is where you select burning. 
Can you avoid meso farming with a kana by using wild totems or is kana faster than wild totem? Mainly using a kana as a farmer is faster if you are playing more than just the amount of time that wild totems give you access to. If you play on a main character that has meso gear and you have like full coverage of wild totems and you don't really play more than that, then I think it's perfectly fine to progress through that. I believe that that is like still a very good rate that you can progress at. If you want to progress faster than that and you play way more than that, the problem becomes once you run out of totems, your spawn in the map and the way that you have to rotate the map goes gets very, very different. And the enjoyment that you can get out of playing the game um, just because of how few monsters are on the map and how you have to maybe move to different maps and everything um, definitely takes a hit. Um, you can move to bigger maps so you have more movement that you have to do and then a more total amount of monsters. Of course, we're going to see the map um, uh, the map rebalancing coming up with Awake here. So that is possible that some maps uh, stay more relevant even without a totem uh, for longer. And maybe certain maps that were not even on the radar of anyone might actually get on people's radars once people start testing the rates in those maps. Uh, but it mostly comes down to how intensely you're playing. So you, ha you can buy 15 totems every month and it lasts two hours each. So that's 30 hours of like dedicated grind. So an average of one hour a day or just one totem every two days, basically. Um, if you dedicated play way more than that, then the time that it takes you to re um, to get your return on your investment in the Kana um, like the more time you play extra, the shorter that re that earn back time is, and after that you're just printing money. But it has to be something you can enjoy and do for a longer period of time to get that earn back, basically. Should we assume no Black Friday cube sales since it wasn't in the patch notes, or do they announce those until we? They announce those typically in the cash up updates, which are announced on Wednesdays. So for anything like that, Black Friday cube sale. Um, item sale, maybe transparent uh, permanent item sale, stuff like that. Always check the website on Wednesdays for the cash up update. Oh yeah, and two items from the Fairy Bros. You're right, yeah, 17 in total. If you do the, the login uh, the login once. They said in the past that they would add uh, Fury Totems more, or Fury Totems back, <laughs> but Wild Totems now. Uh, that was their old name. Um, to event stores more, but they haven't really done that. Um, since then, it, they were in there once, I think. Uh, maybe they will add those instead of the, <laughs> instead of the, the 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 piggy bank. Wishful thinking. Shouldn't you do Ursus now? Tomorrow is maintenance. Um. Yeah, maybe. What do you think of Nightwalkers? Are they still OP bossing? I don't have enough personal knowledge on um, on Nightwalkers to give any kind of um, personal thing. I think they do fine at bossing from the numbers and from from everything I hear about people. I think they do fine. Um, I don't. They probably still do the most amount of hits uh, per burst, if I'm not mistaken. Especially now with the 100% uh, chance to proc all the bats and everything. Does it mean they're OP? I mean, it depends on your definition of OP, right? It, but if you enjoy playing them, as far as I know, they are um, they are a good class that that can uh, definitely make it into the end game and can be a... Uh, um, oh, I never ended up doing my dailies on my arc now. <laughs> because of all the switching. Um, that is definitely like a viable end game character, yeah. Oh yeah, but we could do Ursus together. Uh, before we end the segment with all the questions about, well, you can guys can keep asking questions about the patch, of course. No heart in the shop? No. Well, there there is a there's a lithium heart uh, combined with a, uh, with an android that you can buy, but no fairy heart, like KMS had. No. What am I looking forward to? Me? Um, I'm looking forward to kind of materializing more project uh, CRA and having access to extra fifth job skills that will make the leveling to 210 easier and that will make CRA boss fights easier. Not just easier though, but just more interesting. Is the main thing I'm looking forward to. 
And I guess after that, with the zero coming and just being able to basically play a whole new class that I haven't really played yet. I have like a level 120 or something on on Bera from a long, long time ago, but yeah, I have no idea how any of that worked or works. I'm assuming if you haven't unlocked Morass and Asphera, you can't buy the symbols from the shop. That's correct. Yeah, you can only buy the symbols for the area that you have access to and that you have the pr done the pre-quest for even. Is Ilium good at bossing? Ilium is mainly a mobber. Um, they can kill bosses, but they are mainly uh, in their whole kit. They're kind of designed to be mobbers and to hit multiple targets and stuff. Do we know if they're giving an extra node slot now with the new 4th V? Yes. You will be given an extra slot uh, and you will be... So if you are a new character, getting the 5th job advancement after the update, you will just immediately have all four of the skills that you get and you will immediately have that extra slot. If you um, load in and you have already gotten fifth job, you will automatically get the slot and you will have to collect a um, the skill.